Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. So today we're on the Carex and we're gonna jump into the wiring. So this could be a longer video, but something's gotta get done. So normally when you wire a side-by-side -side, a UTV, you're going to use a traditional rocker style switch like I have in the Pioneer. Well, we're not gonna do that today. Today we're gonna install a micro switch system. Now there's multiple systems out there that you can use. There's Switch Pro, there's Phoenix switches, and the system that we're gonna to use today is the Vox switch. And that's right here. So the advantage of using a system like this is that everything is in a central brain. So you run all your accessories to the brain and then you just have one wire going up to your switch panel. So you don't have the big rockers. There's nothing wrong with the big rocker switches, but my problem with them is every time I have an issue, I have to go back and look up the wiring diagram because I just don't remember. And when you get one of these systems with the micro switches, there's a lot of extra options that come with them. So let's go ahead, let's look at this, and then let's get started with this install because it's gonna be a little bit more lengthy. So here's the box switch unbox, and it's a pretty nice system. So this is your brain or your controller. It comes with a roll bar style RAM mount that you can use uh, on the switch. It comes with your switch panel, and it has different stickers to put on there. It comes with a different set of mounting hardware. Um, you have some spacers in case the roll bar is too big. And you have your positive, and then you have your ground and an ignition. And this is a kind of a nice feature I really like. So when you open this up, this is an old school style relay system. So there's the instructions or what it looks like. So a lot of the higher end switches, well, they're solid state. These, you can actually pull the relays out and the fuses in there and replace them. So what you do is you run all your wires through these two wire tight connectors and you have your eight switches because I bought the eight switch system. This switch also has, if you look down here, there's these little micro switches right there, the dip switches. You can put it to where this has a low voltage cutoff and it has a ignition power on only. And that's how I'm gonna wire it. And that's what this wire is for. So I only want my switches to work when the key ignition is on. I don't want someone to be able to go in there and change the switches. So we'll get that wired up here in a few minutes. The next thing it comes with, is just a nice little uh, template. So you know where to drill if you're gonna use this style of mounts over the RAM mounts. And then it has all kinds of stickers and then some blackout stickers if you're not going to use it. So this box switch I think is a really good option. Now it's not like the higher end versions of the Phoenix switch, the Pro switch, which are solid state, Bluetooth enabled. I didn't need any of that. There's a few features on here I really wanted. One, it had the low battery cutoff. Number two, I can flip it towards ignition power only or it's constant on. I like that ignition power only so someone doesn't come turn on my lights and it kills the battery. Even though it's got the low battery voltage indicator, I just don't like that. The next thing is the switches are programmable. So it has an on off feature. You can program it to be momentary on or off. Then you can add a flash or a strobe function. The nice thing with the flash and the strobe feature is if you click it once, it's the normal on off. If you double click it, it's a flash or a strobe. Now being that this is the lower end models, that's not solid state, you'll hear the relay click on off on off but I am okay with that because really, I don't plan on using it that much. There's some other really great features with this switch also. You can change the backlight coloring, you can dim it, and, and for the price, you really can't beat it. You can buy two or three of these systems for the price of one of the higher end systems. So let's go ahead and let's look at how we're gonna do this install and get started. So to start this install, I went ahead and I bought this weather pack connector. Um, I think it was about $20 online. I think I got it from eBay actually. And it's got nice 12 gauge, which is way overkill for what I'm gonna need, but it's eight wires. So what that means is I have eight switches here. I can go ahead and I can pre-wire this in. Now, if you look at this bottom part here, these little pieces, when you loosen this, will pop out. So you have one wire through the piece and it keeps it just weather tight. 
and it kind of clamps down around it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna feed this through and I'm gonna get all eight of these and then I will number these so I know top row, bottom row. And that's really what I wanted to do. So you have your four switches here. I'm gonna run four wires in the front of the vehicle and then I got four switches here. I'm gonna run four wires to the back of the vehicle. That way if I ever have to disconnect the Switch Pro, I can unscrew it and just unclick it from here. It makes servicing it a lot easier for troubleshooting or whatever reasons I need. So I've gone ahead and I've taken the supplied um, spade pieces and I have crimped them on. I've got them here, so now it's a matter of just putting it into here. Now we have this all wired in. As you can see, everything's nice and tight. Um, I have gone ahead and I have written down uh, the labels there. So you will need to change your fuses out in the future depending on what you need. So if you have a light bar that needs, you know, a 10 amp fuse, you can pull the 30 out, put 10 in to protect it. Now a nice thing is this kit comes with a fuse tap. We're not going to use this because the Kawasaki is pretty good and it has the ignition on key source uh, behind the dash. And then it does come with a spare big fuse right here, which will go down by the battery right there. So I've gone ahead, I've taken the ram mount off, and I have pulled this out of the KRX, because I actually never put it back in uh, last week. So my box switch is gonna go right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and drill those holes and get it mounted. Now, I'm gonna do mine a little different. You're supposed to cut out this whole uh, switch, as you can see, there's a lip, and then you would take these and just kind of mount it like this. So you can see this go over the lip. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill the holes out, flip this over, and mount it that way. And now I have eight switches in the place. I can put three, and I actually don't have eight things for this. So I'm gonna get this. The holes are drilled, and let me show you what I did because it looks a little funny. So your box switch is supposed to go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But because this hole was gonna be like, right here on the corner, I flipped it over so it fits in just like this. Now, if you're gonna do that, it's not a big deal, but what you need to remember is you're now gonna start off with the number eight where your one is. You just have to remember on the wires. On the dash, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that people are gonna notice is that it says box switch upside down. But really, that's gonna look pretty good and you're never really gonna notice that on the angle. So switch is now mounted. It's nice and hard mounted. Let me show you how I did it. So I ended up taking the braces and I cut the end off so it fit down there. And then I used these studs because the screws that came in the package, these ones are just too long. It's an eight millimeter and it's a locking nut. So it's not going anywhere. Next thing we gotta do is get this mounted into the KRX and run the power wire. So in the interest of time, I've gone ahead and I have gutted the uh, KRX, I've taken the interior out, so we can get this box mounted. And let me show you what we're gonna do. All right, so I had the box switched there, and everything taken out, and I've kind of looked everywhere on where I want to mount this. And what I've decided, I'm gonna slide it in, and I'm gonna mount it over here on the side. Now, for you wondering why I took so much stuff out, is I have to run the power line, so I'm gonna run it down here. The other deal is when I'm running the power line, I've already made my own little harness of four wires to run through, and all of a sudden coiled up back here right now. And then when I'm ready to run my rear light accessories, I can go ahead and do that. So here's a simple plate that I made that's gonna bolt into the side of the glove box. It's just some quarter 20 uh, bolts that go there. I made it specifically so it's stacked. So these bolt heads are nice and low. I still need to clean it and paint it. Then I'm gonna take these bolts, or screws that came with the box switch, and I will bolt the box switch on first before I place it into the KRX. Now while that's the easy part, the next thing will be running the wires for the accessories. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get that base plate cleaned up. I'll get it painted, we'll get everything mounted up, and then we'll start wiring on the front accessories. So the only thing I'm gonna wire today is this front mirrors and I did purchase a light bar. So here's a light bar. Now I have not adjusted this yet and I'm going to end up changing this hardware out because I don't like this silver hardware and it's just too long. What I had to do is I had to drill new holes. There is a factory hole up here but it was either too close or too far apart. The hole's exactly 32 inches wide and that's the width of this light bar. 
Um, this is a combo light bar. We got the four LEDs on the ends are the um, flood and the center is the spot. Coming around the inside, if you look, you can see how far that is. And that's just way too far for my liking. So I'll go to the store and get some uh, shorter bolts. Now I did run the wire through, down and out. So we can go ahead and run it over here to the Vox switch. Now, before I run this wire harness to the rear of the vehicle, I need to go ahead and wire it up to the Vox switch. Now, in the beginning of this episode, I wired the first half of the plug into the Vox switch. And I went ahead and I wrote down which wire went where. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use these um, wire fies. I like these for stuff like this because they come in different sizes. But if you look at it, it's got some heat shrink already in there and then it's got solder. So it's kind of an all-in-one and it's a nice clean uh, connection. And then when I'm done, I will put some electrical tape around all this. And if I ever have to disconnect the Vox switch to take it out for maintenance or whatever, check fuses, um, I can just unplug this one plug and the whole Vox switch will come out. Now, this harness here will be hardwired here, but the accessories on the front, I'll use different plugs because I want to be able to unplug every accessory. So at the end of this one, when I put the uh, rear lights or whatever, I can go ahead and I can add a plug to here, uh, you know, another weather pack plug and then a plug to the light so I can unplug that light if I ever have to and I don't have to remove this wiring harness. Got all that done, and as you can see, I've just done the rear. Um, I went ahead and I taped this up. Everything was nice and soldered and did a continuity test. I've gone ahead and clipped the ends of the rear part and just taped it up. So these four wires here will be for the front accessories. Again, I don't plan on using them all, but we'll go ahead and get them wired in there. Now, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this to the rear while we're running the battery cable because, well, do it once and be done and I can put the whole inside of the Carex back together for the final time. Here's where I'm at. I got the box switch mounted. Let me show you. So it is mounted right here. Now I had to put everything up because I have the winch mounts over there, but it makes it nice for this plug. So this is the controller. This is the power wire. And then here's my ignition wire and my ground. What I need to do is I need to run this carefully up through here around to the battery right there. Now the hardest part is obviously gonna be this, but you can actually take this fuse off. There we go. And you can unscrew this piece here, and that's what I'm gonna do. And then we will be able to run this through easier without having the fuse on there. So next thing we're gonna do is we need to run this little makeshift harness I made to the rear. As you can see, all this is open because I'm gonna run it right up next to the XTC stuff. So we'll go ahead and start and do the same thing I did with the battery. So the next thing I need to do is I need to take the positive and the ground system. Now I've shortened these, I've already put new eyelets on here. The ground is absolutely necessary. The positive here is for the ignition on. And because Kawasaki has this little mini bus bar back here, it makes life easy for your ignition on source. Your main power will come from the battery. So I've started the wiring uh, for this front and I am putting uh, quick releases in, as I said, or some something to undo a wire, let's say break a mirror or something. So on the mirrors, I've gone ahead and I have these plugs. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I will run this set of plugs. I have the same thing on that mirror together. So when I hit the switch, the outside lights will be on one switch. The inside lights will be on another switch. Now for the light bar, as you can see, I went ahead and everything I have is uh, heat shrink and I've flipped them. So I can't screw it up. Um, I put the male on one side, the female on the other. And then I have some marine grade uh, trailer wiring. It's heavy duty, water, gas, resistance. But I went ahead and I will put uh, this on here and run all that to the switch. Then it's just a matter of hooking the switch up, 
um, and put the interior back together so we can see if this thing works and how well it works. So let me get that done, the wires run. I know this install is not um, super in-depth on how to. I'm trying to show everyone the capabilities of the Vox switch and where I am installing it because running wires is really personal preference. Uh, you can run it any way you want. You can do anything you want when it comes to wiring it in. I like some way to disconnect, whether it's these uh, male and female spade connectors or or having a weather pack switch like I do on these. Uh, the big thing I was trying to show in the beginning was I had that giant weather pack connector. So let's say the brain or something dies in the box switch, I need a warranty to want to replace it. It's as simple as I don't have to pull the wiring. I can just unplug that switch, pull the uh, screws from the mounts, unmount it, put the new brain in, and just plug in that one box switch. So let me get that done. I'll get the interior put back together and we'll test it out. Well, I got everything buttoned backed up, put back together, so let me show you how this thing works and how we can test it. Let's hop in the cab. All right, so like I said, my Vox switch is right here and it is keyed on. So you can hit the on off button, it won't work. But as soon as you turn the key on, it's currently off. And it will remember where you want to be. Now it has four different colors. I don't remember what they are, but blue is the default. If I turn the key off, turn it back on, the switch is automatically on. So I went ahead and I've already set it up and programmed it. So if I hit my roof light, there it is, on, off. Now to program this is pretty easy. So let's go ahead and let's do the roof light. So we, what you do is you turn this on, you hold it down for three seconds. You wait for it to flash. So you saw the flash. So I hit my roof light. And it's on strobe light. It's on off. So you can have the momentary on or off. There's your flash. And there's strobe. So we'll leave it on that. So you come back down here. Hold this for three seconds. And you're good to go. So you have to do that individually to program each switch. So you can come over here for a switch I'm not currently using. And you don't have to have anything wired in. If you just look at the little amber LED, so that's your on off. There's a momentary, your hazard, strobe, back to on off. And then press this to change it. For those wondering what's the difference between the strobe and the um, flash so like I said you can turn it click this once you'll see that turns on turn it off if you double click it there's your flash there's your strobe so the inside light is your flash the outside light is your strobe and I have them wired together now I can switch the wires if I go in there with those quick release plugs and redo it and then to turn it off you just press it one time Boom, and boom. Now I don't know if you could hear the relays clicking, but yes, they click because this is not a solid state system. Like I said earlier in the video, this wasn't to show you exactly how to wire up your KRX, it's how I'm wiring up mine. I didn't get super in depth with running the wires, but I wanted to show you where I was mounting it and the options that the Vox switch has. And it, it's pretty good, honestly, for the price. We have more stuff to put on there. Like I said, I ran four wires in the back. I have one more wire in the front. I know I'm gonna do on the front wire. I've got three of the rear wires already ready to go, and I'll have one extra wire. Now, worst case scenario, I can disconnect the wire I ran to the back if I need an extra accessory on the front. That's the beauty of having that quick release weather pack plug. So I hope you learned something. I hope you liked it. Let me know, is the box switch for you? Is it not? Do you want to spend more money, get the solid states, you know, Switch Pro or Phoenix? I don't know. I don't think they're worth twice the money, but that's my opinion. Some people want the Bluetooth feature. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Until next time.